every real horror fan has had at least one experience of feeling out of place when compared with quote unquote mainstream society, but I don't think there's ever been a really good attempt to understand why it is that people like horror. Like, most horror fans are generally normal people who have pretty good reasons for enjoying horror, but what are those reasons? The real reasons, not the ones they learn to tell people to make them leave them alone. That's what our podcast is about, interviewing people in the horror business to find out what it is that they actually like about horror. My name's Steve, I'm a bit of a psychology buff, and my co-host is my friend Chris, who's a bit of a horror buff, and so far we've interviewed about 60 people in the biz and had a lot of fun with it. In this set of excerpts, we're just going to share some of the fun stuff. If you want to hear the real meat of the interview, come check us out at Apple, Google, Spotify, or any place that you download your podcast from. There's also a player on our website, Horror Makes Us Happy. In this set of excerpts, we're going to talk to author Autumn Christian, best known for her books The Crooked God Machine, We Are Wormwood, and Girl Like a Bomb, podcaster Heather Powell, best known for her participation in the Slumber Party Massacre podcast and Friday Nightmares podcast, and author Josh Mailerman, best known for his book Bird Box, which was turned into a movie, also Goblin and A House at the Bottom of the Lake. Autumn Christian, welcome to the show. Hello. Hey, I'm happy to be here so far. Yeah, right. It's been fun <laughs> times. Give it a couple <laughs> minutes. Yeah, it's been eight minutes. For, we, yeah, we've talked it. about uh, cursed stars and drawing dicks in the Bible. It's good times. <laughs> 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 happy Mother's Day. Uh, happy yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, for our Patreon subscribers, that that'll be an interesting conversation. Yes. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, um, then I discovered R.L. Stein in a bookstore. Um, it mm-hmm. was "Please Don't Feed the Vampire." It had a poodle on the cover. And it was like holographic, and you know you're a kid, so you're just like, "Oh wow!" Like shiny. Um, it was one <laughs> <Right>. of the. <laughs> it was one of the like choose your own adventure books, and uh, I also had a poodle. It was the most horrible like dog I, I have ever had. Um, <laughs> it just did not like me. It did not want me touching it. So, but that was really like when I first started like loving like literature and reading. <laughs> <laughs> because it, because yeah. it fed the poodle to the vampire. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think that was one of it was like you could either become a vampire in the choose your own adventure or like you could feed the like little it was like a little blood packet because it's like a kid's thing. But you, then your dog oh. could become a vampire. <laughs> <laughs> I read Dracula when I was really young. Hmm. Well, I read part of it. Um, I might have been like seven or eight. This was sort of my like Joker moment, I think, um, hmm. because it, I got it taken away from me. Because <laughs> um, <laughs> like I got it, I got to the point. If, if you've read it, or like, I mean, everyone's like knows the story basically, but the part where the vampire hunter um, like is about to stake Lucy like in the ground, and like you know you're a child, so it's like this very intense like moment and that's like the moment they they were like no you can't read this it's too it's too dark (laughs) it's too adult but wait yeah (laughs) (laughs) so then my personality sort of like formed around that betrayal and i've ever since i'm just like (laughs) are you talking about the betrayal of having the book taken away from you (laughs) yes (laughs) (laughs) so do you horror horde books now not actually anymore. I've actually lost them a couple times because I moved so much, but <clears throat> I, I've tr- I mostly transferred to digital because mm-hmm. then I can have them with me always. Yes. That was probably the weirdest one because my mm-hmm. mom, I said I wanted to be a fly and she was like, oh, like a butterfly? And I'm like, no, like a, <laughs> like a black house fly, like the ugly looking other <laughs> like, well, Had you recently the, seen uh... the fly? <laughs> I hadn't seen the fly, actually. I didn't see that until I was an adult. Okay, hmm. probably <laughs> probably a good thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah that one might have been a little intense. No, I imagine that'd be a pretty easy costume. Just uh, you know, two colanders for the eyes, and then antenna, <laughs> yeah. and then you got uh, wings and a black suit. Uh, maybe a vacuum cleaner hose for the proboscis. You know, <laughs> I didn't have anything like I didn't have any makeup, but yeah, it was just like a black. I think it was just like a black leotard and then some like fly wings. It's pretty <laughs> simple. <laughs> Are you a bumblebee? No, I'm a housefly. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a yeah. fairy costume, but just black. Yeah. <laughs> it's interesting because, like, she go- she really goes through like <laughs> in like the crushing like mundanity of existence and how she feels um, very trapped by it. Like, there's a sequence <laughs> where she's like talking about how tired she is at the realization she's going to have to wash her hair every day for the rest of her life. Um, <laughs> like just relate. like the 
Well, I mean, I did the hair thing, but like, no, I was gonna say, wait, no, you can't. <laughs> <laughs> I, I feel like that's like almost like an adult horror in a way. Nihilism. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yeah, no, and that that is a good point that your fears adapt and change because, like, as a child, like, you're very helpless. Um, and then as an adult, you're like, okay, like, there still might be scary things in the dark, but like, I have tools, I have resources, like, I have information, like, that I didn't necessarily yep. have as a child. And coping mechanisms, you know, and I'm yeah. an adult now, I can go, if I'm scared of the dark, go turn on the light. Yeah. <laughs> you know, the, yeah. the kid's just going to lay there in bed and scream. Yeah. <laughs> And it's interesting that you say you talk about like acquiring new fears because like um, when I was in my late twenties, I actually uh, developed like a agor- uh, not agoraphobia, um, whatever the fear of heights is. I forget the name mm-hmm. of it, but like I had never been afraid heights. of heights. So by now, I'm guessing you have more of a, a connection with other people in in the world that have uh, interest in horror. It's not just your family and. Also, probably beyond deviant art at this point. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, I know a lot of writers. Um, I have, I'm occasionally let out of my closet to go social. <laughs> 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 um, sometimes my husband even lets me wear shoes. I'm like, that's nice. Oh, 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 oh look oh. at you wearing shoes. <laughs> <laughs> so you're only pregnant, not barefoot pregnant. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I did dress up as like a, a witch one year, but it wasn't overly scary. But my mom loved Halloween. So maybe this, you actually kind of triggered something. Um, mm. My mom would dress up in elaborate makeup. So she would put blood down her shirt. She would put spiders on her face. She would play spooky music. And the kids would come to the door and she would be like, oh, what would you like? And the parents would be terrified and the kids thought she was amazing. So much so that she dressed up and she came to my grade two classroom dressed as a witch (laughs) um, and brought like cupcakes and stuff just to kind of like, I guess, bring the the Halloween um, theme. So she, but I didn't find that scary because it was my mom, right? Like I wasn't scared of it because it was my mom. And I enjoyed going up to houses, but if there was a house that looked a little too scary, like a dude sitting in a chair, but you're not sure if it's really like a scarecrow or a dude and mm. you're walking up. Oh yeah. Like that scared the shit out of me as a kid, <laughs> but I still did it. And I, I'm to this day, I, Halloween is a big deal, you know, and it definitely started in childhood. Loved it. Loved it. Loved it. Loved it. Loved trick or treating, which is a thing in Canada. People ask me the dumbest questions. Yes, we trick or treat in Canada. For goodness sakes. <laughs> Of course we do. Everywhere in Canada, <laughs> trick or treats. So that's just so we're clear, it's a thing. Um, we also give out candy. candy. Okay, okay. So it, you do give out candy, not um, ma- <laughs> not maple syrup and like poutine, know. like handfuls of poutine. <laughs> <or candy. laughs> like it's not even a bowl or a container. It's just you have a ladle and hold out your hand. All right, you're so crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Happy Halloween! <laughs> eh? Um, <laughs> walk it in their bag. Yep. How did you know? You must have toured up here during October. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> you know, it's it's definitely enlightening, but I think you've really made me think about how I Im- viewed those females. Because I think most women who watch horror films, I can speak, I think, for all the, the Summer Party Mask Girls, girl ladies that I podcast with, we all envision ourselves as the final girl. We want to be the smartest. We want to be the one that is smartest to kill her. We want to be the one that gets the revenge. No one's like, oh man, I hope I die in the first scene. It's like, yeah. <laughs> right? Like, no guy, no girl's like, except for, I always joke that I'm like, yeah, I'd be the first one dead. I'd be banging and getting drunk. Like, just realistically, guys, I probably would be. So, <laughs> that's like, but I think deep down inside, we all fantasize about being the one that's the most powerful. And, you know, maybe this was a way for me to, to escape to that too at that time imagining how how many female horror fans out there would be in that situation just going oh, off right, <laughs> right right exactly like really I, right right <laughs> yeah, yeah didn't even get a chance damn it <laughs> right it's absolutely the battery is an excellent film very on the surface it's kind of a zombie yeah. film but underlying that it's it's kind of a um a, a social struggle between two friends that are figuring out how much they trust each other absolutely mm. like the platform you know, we're, we're kind of just yelling out movies now, but like, yeah. hopefully people watch these because honestly, yeah. like I'm, when you were like, Oh, I've seen land mine goes click. I'm like, Oh, thank God. Finally, <laughs> you know, <laughs> like finally, I'm not talking about movie. And they're like, Heather, what the f- are you talking about? Like, mm-hmm. But the platform, when that came out, talk about the perfect p- timing with the pandemic. Mm-hmm. Like it couldn't have been timed better. One time I did dress up as like a movie star and I went out to Boston pizza, which is a 
chain here, like your chilies, mm-hmm. basically. And uh, we knew the bartender really well. And I talked like a valley girl the entire night like this. And like the bartender was fine. Like, Heather, I can't fucking take it. I'm going to punch you in the face. <laughs> <if you don't laughs> <stop." laughs> And else. Oh, so that that was probably she was annoyed. I thought it was hilarious because I wore my sunglasses too the entire time, and I had this fake fur coat, and I was like, and I had a boa, like I went fucking all out, and I was like, I would like a martini, mm. yeah. And she was like, What the fuck are you doing? Um, Acting, right? I was like, I'm trying to be an actress. I'm gonna follow Nev Campbell. My dream has come true. <laughs> But yeah, so that would probably be the one that other people hated, but I thought it was hilarious. I just think I do have some final girl capability, mm-hmm. you know, <laughs> just saying, out of all the other ladies on the Summer Party Massacre who are listening to this right now, just so you guys know, mm-hmm. I am more likely to be the final girl. <laughs> would you consider yourself more of a uh, Jamie Lee Curtis from Halloween or more of an Aaron from Your Next? Oh, Aaron from Your Next? <laughs> <laughs> like, is that even a question? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> I'm definitely Aaron. No, I'm, just, I'm, just, I'm, I'm gauging your skill because Aaron from your next is a 10. You know, that, that's what the right. final girls oh, yeah. all aspire to be. Like, yeah, well, I'm Canadian. So automatically I, okay. I know how to do all that shit just to survive my wilderness that I live in. Right. Like, it's true, of course, serious, true. serious times. <laughs> but that and Ontario and wilderness. Right. Well, and I've run into bears. I'll be honest. The other traumatic experiences. Oh. I have gone up north and I uh, reel up north and I've run into baby bears. And mm, run into baby before. bears are followed by mama bears. Yeah. And, yeah. and yeah. I was very lucky one time I was going for a jog and a uh, car went ahead of me, turned around, came back and said, you need to turn around now. There's a mama with three cubs. Mm. And I was like, thank you. Yeah. And one other time I was, I was fishing and I turned around and I saw two very adorable baby bears and I turned to my buddy. I'm like, we need to get the fuck out of here. Now he's like, why? I'm like, because there's three cubs or two cubs that are like mm-hmm. two feet away from us. He's like, holy f- <laughs> 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 like, yeah. You know, when you want to scare a Canadian, put a baby bear near them or a moose. And my mom says it was like very close to where I hit play. My mom says, you know, everyone in the house has seen a ghost except for Josh. (laughs) And she's like, why do you think that is? And the psychic's like, well, I don't think Josh is ready. And I was like, I'm alone at home. (laughs) Listening to this. (laughs) And I have a younger brother, an older brother, dad, mom. And I'm like, wait, Ryan, Derek, they saw a ghost? Like, wait, what? Like, when you, you know, like if mom saw a ghost, it's almost like maybe, right? But but Ryan and Derek, like my cohorts in existence, my like team. My immediate reaction is to wonder, did like she create this? Right. And then plant it right in front of you. (laughs) Don't, don't listen to this. I got like super scared. And, but at the same time, this is kind of weird. It answers something that you were kind of saying before. I was like mad that Ryan, what, Ryan was ready? Derek was ready? <laughs> I, I my, mom, my mom told me that, or told us that she had seen something in her, like, near, like, the, in her, like, bathroom of the master bedroom. So I run upstairs. I'm alone again. I run upstairs. I run into the bathroom. I'm like, show yourself. Show yourself. <laughs> and I'm like looking in the mirror and I'm like, right when I feel like it might happen, I'm like, no, 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 no. And I ran outside. <laughs> <laughs> so not ready after all. Show yourself. Do it. Well, maybe not right now. Just not right now. No, I, I was ready. Damn it! And I just showed you I was ready. <laughs> kind of. This isn't just something to say. I could uh, leave the house right now. I could just walk out the door and keep walking until I died. I could save up money and fly to Alaska. I could kill someone. I could marry someone. I could write a novel. I could make a movie. I can die. I can live. I can swim. I can jump. I can do whatever. I, literally anything I want to do with my life, I can do right now. Mm-hmm. And it was so unbelievably overwhelming, so true and so big and so scary that I called nine one one on myself. <laughs> okay. And I, I called nine one one. I'm like, listen, I don't, I don't know what's going on. I, I can do anything I want with my life. I can do anything I want. <laughs> okay. I'd like to hear a recording of that call. Yeah, well, God, I wonder if sir, that, sir, yeah. this is a Wendy's. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> and they're like, and they were like, uh, wow, uh, like, uh, are you are you on drugs? Like, no, Have you no. had anything to eat? <laughs> like, no, they're like, are you on drugs? I'm like, no, 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 I'm not on drugs. I don't know why. Just hmm. the way you said, "Looks like I've killed you." Just makes me think of like somebody saying in a British accent, "Like oh, I'm, so, I'm so." I was thinking the same sorry, thing. Yes. You know, I, I, yes. I, I meant to just spear this pole right through the car, and it, it appears that I've I've inadvertently killed you. I apologize, <laughs> my dear. <laughs> that was amazing. Thank you. 
Wow. <laughs> now, now I know to use you if we ever need like an English accent or something. I'm going to call you. <laughs> <laughs> it's an interesting dichotomy, I guess, there that, like you say, I'm just trying to be funny, but I'm afraid I killed you. Like there's, there's this, you know, you enjoy horror. But it, like you were saying earlier, it's it's both at the same time. You've you've got the fear and the pleasure at the same time. I'm wondering if there's something that happened in your life that maybe just a general fear of people in in general, like like fear of how how the public will respond to what you enjoy. Let's put it that way. Yeah, I was gonna say fear fear of disapproval. Whoa, yeah, I absolutely have that. Wow, how the did you get to there? <laughs> what just happened? Well, I feel you, like you just pulled a magic trick off. I really do. I feel like you're like looking at us some questions about youth, uh, young manhood, and adulthood. And well, you. like the description that you gave, you're like, okay, I killed this person, but you're like, I'm sorry. I was just trying to be funny. Like, it, I didn't mean to hurt you. I'm, I, I like this. Mm-hmm. I just think it's really, 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 really cool what you guys are doing um, because. Like I would sometimes kind of go off on something because I just have a tendency to do that, like most people do, I suppose. And then yeah, yeah. you just kind of say the course. Like, All right, here's another question about your teens. Here's another. <laughs> and it was like, it's cool. There was like a sense of like, um, you said it wasn't a therapy session, but there was still a sense of like scientific study that I almost picture like Bill Murray, right? And I'm I'm over mm. here guessing which card you're holding up. And like, <laughs> and, and I think that's really, circle. Really no, I'm sorry. It's cool. square. When you. <laughs> brought up those three words at the end i i'm over here you can't see me i like looked at the screen i was like and i like pointed at the screen and i was like this guy's f-ing good <laughs> <laughs> like that was awesome that was really really cool and I, I think it's a really super interesting thing that you guys are doing i've never definitely never experienced something like this and i've and i've done a few podcasts now this is amazing we appreciate your appreciation of it yeah right so yeah, come check us out over at HorrorMixHappy.com or check out some of our other excerpts until you find someone who's interview you do want to hear. 